Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of May 30th, 2022. We got three stories this week, only three stories, but one of them is actually a pretty big one, which is the first one. Uh, Amazon is telling the FAA not to investigate certain crashes that they've had with their drones. We'll talk about a big rescue drone, which almost looks like it's too good to be true. It's from a company called Hair. And then lastly, we'll talk about a drone crash in California by, well, a pretty large drone. I would say a very large drone, actually. So let's get to it. And the first story this week is kind of a big one. Uh, this comes out of a Business Insider report that uh, we found online and finally have access to. And it appears that Prime Air, uh, the company that does Amazon drone delivery, uh, has been avoiding FAA crash investigation by claiming that the company has the authority to conduct its own investigations, which uh, would be kind of a first. At least twice now, the FAA inspectors have found that Amazon has moved crash evidence and has also inhibited the investigation from the FAA. Uh, at least eight Amazon drones have crashed last year, and one of them actually sparked a 20-acre wildfire in Oregon, which is not a good thing. Uh, Amazon said that the regulatory delay could totally disrupt the goal timeline for launching Prime Air uh, delivery, which is expected in 2024. Now, I find this very interesting. A lot of you have been very critical, including ourselves, uh, of Amazon trying to uh, basically take over the entire space and uh, for, for drone flying. And uh, this is interesting that uh, crashes could disrupt their thing and then paperwork from the FAA could disrupt their progress when this is something that all of us have been dealing with uh, with the FAA for years now. Uh, Amazon responded by stating that the company has, and then this is quote unquote, um, has complied with all uh, accident reporting, investigation, and other applicable regulatory requirement. They also said that over the last seven years, uh, the FAA has never taken an enforcement action against Prime Air and has awarded us an air carrier certificate to enable commercial deliveries, showing that our comprehensive process has met the FAA's high bar. Uh, you can find a link down in the description to the article from Business Insider. Uh, I think this is going to be something that uh, we'll hear about again. Now, the fact that uh, the FAA has never taken action doesn't mean that they've been doing things legally. I want to mention that to the spokesperson here. Uh, that is no proof of actually operating correctly. Uh, that can be said of every YouTuber that's uh, flying illegally out there. And uh, and they can say, well, we've uh, we've been complying with everything and uh, nobody's ever taken action against us. So this must be legal. Uh, I think that's a terrible defense. But uh, I'm sure this won't be the last time that we hear from large companies like this having uh, an effect on, uh, on investigations. And hopefully the FAA can uh, put a stop to that. Okay, the next Next drone that we want to talk about is called a Hera Rescue Drone. Uh, this is a California startup uh, named Real Time Robotics, and they released a portable heavy lift drone. Think about this for a second a heavy lift drone, something that can carry quite a bit of stuff that is actually portable. Uh, they say it beats the competitors in terms of situational awareness for first responders. Uh, it is backpack sized, so it can actually fold and fit inside of a backpack. And it actually the, has the capability of carrying 30 pounds of, uh, of payload, and that includes four different cameras, either EO cameras or IR cameras. Uh, it can be tethered or untethered, and then the flight time is 46 minutes with a five pound payload, which is actually pretty impressive in terms of flight time. They also said that they are NDA compliant, so uh, if you're looking, uh, we could not find a price point per se, but it looks like uh, several sources online say it's around $25,000. So we'll put a link down in the description if you want to take a look at that. Uh, I think this is interesting. Uh, lots of claims, obviously. Uh, it would be interesting to see how this thing flies and uh, if it actually does what, uh, what the marketers are telling us it does. The next thing and the last thing this week is a large drone that crashed in California. This is a crop spraying drone, so not a small drone, uh, that crashed in Winters, California. And the news source say that the aircraft had a wingspan of 10 feet, but actually if you look at the NTSB report, and we put a link down here so you can see the, uh, the NTSB report number, uh, the NTSB report says that the aircraft make and model uh, suggests a 38 
foot wingspan and then a maximum gross takeoff weight of 1,320 pounds, uh, which is I think six or 700 of that would be the liquid that uh, the spraying drone was uh, carrying. Uh, the drone itself is called a Pika Pelican 7 and it crashed into a field and uh, there was uh, it, there was actually a post-crash fire involved with the, um, with the crash of the aircraft and uh, there was no injuries reported. Again, we'll put a link down in the description so you can read about this accident, but uh, this, is, this is a very large drone to crash, a very, very large drone at over a thousand pounds. All right, this is all I have for you this week. Uh, as always, like, subscribe. Next week, you're gonna have a bit of a surprise because, uh, well, I'm actually taking a little bit of personal time off. Uh, it's, been, uh, well, it's been several years since I've done that, since uh, starting Pilot Institute. So uh, we'll have uh, a guest host. I'm sure you will enjoy him very much. And then I will see you when I come back. So enjoy your week and I'll see you next time. Thank you.